welcome back to Lord's Prayer. Off you go. Hope you're all ready to get going. Singing praises to the Lord. We're going to sing our song to get ourselves going. Here we go. Read a mind. It says to me, tells me that I'm never ever alone. I'm learning how J E S U S came down to us and gave his best. Without a doubt, the best friend you'll ever know. Our God knows exactly what I need, so I remember this. to say thank you for another wonderful time of singing from Phoebe and from Joe. Now we're going to watch one of God's heroes in his Hall of Fame. This time it's going to be Moses. What I want you to look for is what does Moses do with his shoes? <laughs> The Faithful Hall of Fame, Moses. This is Moses. Hey all. Moses was an Israelite boy born in Egypt in a time when Israelite boys were not supposed to live. Wait, huh? The Israelites were slaves to the Egyptians. But God had a special plan for Moses. Oh, eh? And he spent his childhood in the palace of the Pharaoh. You see, when Moses grew up, he made a big mistake. Uh oh. Pharaoh found out what Moses had done, and he tried to have Moses killed. Ah! So Moses ran away from Egypt. He stopped in the land of Midian. Ah. And seven sisters came to the well to give water to their father's flock. Some shepherds came to drive them away. Hey, you. But Moses stood up for the women. Hey. 
Now these sisters were the daughters of the Midianite priest named Jethro. When Jethro heard what Moses did for his daughters, he sent for Moses. So Moses came to live among the Midianites, and he married Zipporah, one of Jethro's daughters. Huh? Meanwhile, back in Egypt, the old pharaoh died, but he was replaced by a new pharaoh <laughs> who continued to treat the Israelites poorly. Oh, man. The Israelites cried out to God because of the terrible things that the pharaoh made them do. God heard these people and knew it was time to act. One day, Moses was tending Jethro's flock when an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses through a burning bush that would not burn up. Oh. Moses stopped to look at the bush and he heard the voice of God say, Moses, Moses. Hello? God then told Moses how sad he was because of the suffering of his people. He told Moses, that he wanted to do something about it, and he wanted Moses to be the one to do it. Oh, man. But Moses did not think he was the right person to go. God said, I will be with you. Uh, morning. But Moses said that he wouldn't know the right thing to say to the people. So God said to tell the people that God himself had sent him and promised Moses that his plan would be fulfilled through Moses. But Moses still said to God that he did not think the people would believe him. So God said, what is that in your hand? Oh. Moses said, a staff. God told Moses to throw it on the ground. Wow, okay. Then God told Moses to catch it. God showed Moses another sign huh? and told him to show these signs to the people if they did not believe what he said. Moses still didn't think he would have the right words to say, but God said that he himself was the one who made a man's mouth and gave him the ability to speak, so there was no need to worry. Yet even after all this, Moses said, God, please send someone else. Then God got mad at Moses Oops. and said that he would send Moses' brother Aaron to speak for Moses. So Moses went back to his father-in-law and told him that he needed to go back to Egypt. Moses and his family started their journey back to Egypt. And Moses carried the staff of God in his hand, for this staff would be the tool God would use to demonstrate his awesome power to the Israelites and to the Egyptians. Did you notice? that he took his shoes off because it was holy ground. We'll think a bit more about Moses after we've seen Kirsten's craft. Really looking forward to that, aren't you? Hi, Launchpad. I hope you're all okay. Uh, it's been ages since I've seen you all, so I hope you're all doing well. Um, I'm doing the craft for Launchpad Sunday School today, and uh, I know that you've just watched a video um, the second video actually on uh, Moses I think and this one was all about Moses and the burning bush so to help you remember the story I thought we could make our own burning bush so I'll tell you the things that you need uh, before we start so you'll have to um, get a either a paper plate or um, a piece of card that's cut into a circle. Uh, remember, with any cutting that uh, needs to be done, make sure you ask a grown-up to help you. I don't want you to hurt yourself. So a paper plate, and then I've got a brown um, piece of uh, sugar paper, and I've cut it into a rectangle. And then I've got a 
uh, green semicircle, which is the same size I measured it as my plate. And I measured it by drawing around the paper plate and then cutting it in half. So nice and easy, but again, make sure you get a grown up to help you with the cutting. Uh, I've then got three plates and one of them has got orange tissue paper. The other one has got, can you see that? <laughs> Red tissue paper. And the last one has got yellow tissue paper. Maybe you can see all those okay. So let's get ready to start. All the other thing that you need is just some blue Pritt stick or PVA glue. Okay, so I'm gonna start by sticking down my brown piece of car, uh, sugar paper, sorry, which is going to, well, I'll let you see what it's going to be in just a moment. So just like that, sticking it like that. I wonder if you can imagine what it might be. Hmm, I wonder. And then I'm gonna get my green sugar paper and cover it in some glue. And then I'm going to stick it at the top of my paper plate, like that. Hmm, what do you think it might be now? Can you see that? Wonder, you think it might be a bush? I think so, that's what it's meant to be anyway. What it's meant to be. And then, oh, I just need a bit more glue around the edge of my paper plate. It's not sticking very well. Like that. And then I think you probably guessed to make the bush look like it's burning, we're going to have to add some fire coloured tissue paper. So I'm just going to pop some Pritt stick all over my the green bit of my bush and just start adding bits of tissue paper until you've got as much on as you'd like. And I keep alternating the colours so that you get a good fire effect. I've used tissue paper, you don't have to use tissue paper, you could even colour it if you wanted to. So I think it's quite fun to do the sticking side of it. What? A bit more yellow. And I've cut my, well, I've um, ripped my shreds up here quite small actually, but you could do yours bigger if you wanted to. Ooh. And just keep sticking until you've got a nice bit of fire on your, on your tree or your bush. Like that. Ooh, sticking to my fingers. And you're going to need a bit more orange. Oh, I think it likes my fingers. And a bit more red. And a bit more yellow. Or you could even paint it if you wanted to. You could do, um, you could actually do little um, blobs of finger paint. That'd be quite fun. Should have thought about that earlier, shouldn't I? Okay. That one is not wanting to stick to my <laughs> pesky thing. Take that one off. But as you can see, you can keep sticking until you've got enough fire on your burning bush. And then if you wanted to, you could always hole punch a little hole in the top and um, put a little bit of string through and it could hang up if you wanted it to. So that is my burning bush. So whenever I look at my craft, I can remember the story of Moses and the burning bush. So I hope you enjoy doing that and I shall look forward to seeing any that are posted. Um, and I hope you keep very safe and well. Uh, enjoy the craft and I'll see you again very soon. Bye. I noticed these things from the cartoon. First of all, Moses saw a burning bush. Now look, when you burn something, it becomes ashes. But that didn't happen because God 
is like a consuming fire, but he didn't burn up that lovely tree. He spoke to Moses from it. The second thing I noticed was how God changed Moses' rod into a snake, a miraculous thing that God did. Then he changed it back into a rod when Moses picked it up. So you see, Moses was going to have the authority of God when he went back to Egypt to lead the people out of slavery. And the last thing I noticed was Moses kept trying to make excuses. He said, will anyone believe me? They won't listen to me. I'm not very good at speaking. God told Moses that God's power would be enough for him. And you know, God's power is enough for you and for me in all the things we face in life, especially when we think we can't do something, we can ask God to help us. Now we'll finish with a prayer. Let's pray together. Thank you, God, that you spoke to Moses and Moses led his people out of slavery. And it makes us think of Jesus who led us out of sin. Please help us when we don't know what to do and we don't think that we can manage to do it. Show us that we can pray to you and you can give us the strength and the power. Now bless everyone who's listened to the story and bless every family. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now we're going to go back to Joe and Phoebe for that lovely final song. God bless you all. Welcome back. Well, thank you for that time, that time of crafting and that time of having our story explained to us by Andrew, the second half of Moses. What happened? What happened next? Well, there we go. Thank you for that. I'd just like to uh, introduce you to my little helper, Belle. Can you come, Belle? Give us a twirl. Beautiful. Phoebe thought she'd give you all a treat this week. And we're going to finish our time together by singing a song about asking God for to show us his ways. So we need to do that, don't we? We need to pray to God to ask him what he wants us to do for him. What is his ways? What is his plan for us? And we need to trust in him. So we're going to finish off with that song. Give us a little bit of a wiggle as we start. So press the music, Phoebe. To my little DJ. And off we go.
our time today. Just remember that story of Moses in the burning bush. And we'll see what happens next. What story is going to come next? We shall find out next week. And we'll see you again soon. Bye!